me turn some lights on. Okay, that's all Bondo. Yeah, that's what you were seeing in the picture there. Okay, that's an original seat frame. Hitch. Where's the rest of the windshield? That's all there was with it when I bought it. Okay. You can see where the center bar went. You know, the divider bar. Okay. Does it pop out a second when you drive it? Yeah. Okay. And I've got the clutch adjusted all the way out and it's still got a grind in it, so I'm fairly confident it probably needs a, a pressure plate or a...
It has the big hole here for the old style big fat valve stem. And once I put air in it and see it's not positioned right, it creeps up in the hole there. It creeps up and bends in sideways. So he needs vintage tubes. Yeah. It's January 20th, 2014, and this is a Willie's project. It's a mess in here. And here's a beast. Kinda. What I've done is taken a sanding wheel to the frame, and I've sanded it on really nice right here. You can tell under here what it used to look like. But the parts you're gonna see, I sanded all that down. I sanded right here, but we're going to front disc brake, so I'm not even going to have to worry about that. I cut my bumper at an angle like the Willy should be, because this isn't an original bumper. I probably got hit many times in its life. We're leaving the front leaf springs on. They're not heavily worn out yet. They'll work for a few more years. I've got that all painted green. I sanded the frame rails all the way down. This is a fuel line. I don't know why, but the previous owner decided it'd be a good idea to zip tie it right here. So I took all that off because I can see it getting ripped off when I'm climbing over a hill or something. So I'm gonna have to reroute that. I haven't really taped off the body when I've been painting because this entire section right here from here forward is completely being restored. The only part I'm really caring about is the grill because I'm going to hang that up on my wall. So I taped that off and it's just got a little bit of dust on it. Well this hood, if you really look down at it, it's been dented in pretty bad right here. Here's the go devil. We've converted it to a 12 volt. We've got a pointless ignition we haven't put on yet because we don't want to accidentally break it inside and not have it in operation for a long time. So we're going to get that done when the engine gets rebuilt. And what I've done for my winch is we've got it hooked up and I've got the wires running underneath here. And then I have it fed out through the frame. This way it's not going to get caught on any rocks. And then it just comes out to here. There's a lot of mud stuffed in here. Took me a good half hour to get those wires in there. The engine itself looks pretty clean. It just smokes pretty bad. We already had to replace a head gas because it wasn't. The head itself was not straight, which it could have been from the factory because they're in production mode. 
what I've got to do to change on my grill is this is a CJ3A. So this radiator mounts to the grill right here. On a CJ2A, the radiator will mount to this cross member right here. So what I've got to do is make a different kind of mounting system, which won't be too hard. I'll probably make something that runs off of this frame rail. The hood itself is in decent condition. You can see that the Jeep was originally green, yellow, orange, um, a little bit of black in here somewhere. I had to get all new hood latches. These are pretty worn out. And this one I stole off the MB fenders. It's so tight that it's just scratching the hood every time it goes up and down. The body itself is disgusting. These fenders are complete junk. Whoever did a Bondo job did awful at it. I mean... I don't know, I wouldn't really call that a repair panel. It's junk. These are all rusted out. The supports. There's a little bit of green peeking through right here. This little dent here happened at Haspen Acres. I was going up a hill and it was towards the end of fall, tons of leaves on the ground full of mud. Tires were packed up and it was just slipping on the side of that hill. So it slid sideways and luckily there's a bunch of trees there and it rested against this. Instead of tumbling down into a ravine. There's about two inches of the body missing on this lower part. You can tell there's not a side cowl here anymore for the bottom of the fender or else this wouldn't be pushed back that much. It was repaired with this same material right here all along the side, but I had it in the back swamp and it caught the ground and just completely sheared it right off. It was pretty cheesy anyway. This right here, I don't really get this. I can stick my finger in there about that much. Here's another bad job of body work. This is just sheared up, packed full of mud. It's missing the body right here. It used to be. There's a little rivet right here. So it must have been an attempt at repair. This part right here seems decently solid. But once you get looking at this entire part right here, it's just shot. And there's about half an inch between this and the body. And I could maybe repair this myself, but there's a whole custom floor welded in from the previous owner. And it just wouldn't be worth putting gear into to something that's not original anyways. Here's an example of what happens to wheelies when they sit outside. Probably gonna grind all that out. There's some solid metal right behind this. This corner has been crushed in since I got it. I did straighten it out at one time, but we're coming down a hill and the brakes kinda suck. So it hit a giant bulldozer tire about this tall laying on the ground. Could have been going more than a few miles an hour, but it just crushed it right in. So there's no substance here. There isn't a straight line on this body. I don't even know how I got pushed in. I had a spare tire back here. The tailgate was in awful shape to begin with. This whole area is rusted out right here. 
when the previous owner welded in a new floor, there was nothing to flip the tailgate on. So for what I was doing, we didn't really care. So welded this in right here. If I'm grinding this off, here's an example of how crappy the body is. I'm gonna have to make a new rear bumper. Something a little more sturdy than this. When I got pulled out by a TJ, we had the winch wrapped around here, but it just sheared it right through. It is 60 plus years old, so. And it's just junk. Here's an example of just how bad this body is. That's a chunk of bondo. It's just disgusting. This whole section right here is complete bondo. This is probably the only real solid metal you can touch on the body. The inside's rusted as well. I don't know why the previous owner didn't cut all that out when he welded in a new floor. This is what the other side looked like before it got ripped off. I don't really get what that was. Just some more chippable paint. This area right here has been repaired numerous times. You can tell it's not straight at all. This paint's just junk. This fender's got the same crappy repair the other one has. And you can flex it. We found a guy that builds sheet metal race car bodies. And he also does other people's vehicles and covers them up. So what he's going to do is take sheet metal. He's going to start from right here and down. He's going to wrap new sheet metal all over the outer body. I'm going to grind off the tailgate. He's going to put a sheet metal panel over that. So it'll look like a Willy zombie. Then I'm going to have room to mount my spare tire up higher. Put the jerry can on here. He had a YJ heated it too. And you couldn't even tell. It was altered at all. There's the awful steering wheel. Touch this and your hands come off black. Here's a new one I got for my birthday. Nice and shiny. The dash itself is in pretty good shape. We had to go to a uh, max key because the old one was junk. Had to get all new shifter knobs, didn't come with any shifter knobs. The pedals themselves, they got a little bit of wear, but... The floor that the previous owner rolled in is actually pretty decent. He got all the original body geometry on here. The only bad thing he did was the way he attached these. But, it's built out of a lot stronger metal than it was originally. And it's good for what I'm doing off-road. I just got to over here, we had to make some passenger seat frame mounts. And I'm going to make a toolbox that goes in between the mounts right there and goes all the way to the end of this. So I can leave my toe strap in there, extra tools, camera, phone, all that kind of stuff. That's where I've been mounting my ammo box. Speedometer doesn't work, fuel gauge does, oil pressure does. I don't know about anything else, I don't really look. Right here we have the rim sandblasted, primed and painted with olive drab green, number 33070. And I got a bunch of parts and in the parts were these tires. They weren't brand new but they were used 
They have no dry rotting on them, unlike the other tires. This is either a Willys MB or a Ford GPW hood. I'm not sure which because the seller never knew. And when I bought it, it had the holes in it over here for the lube chart, but I don't have one. I don't care to have one, so we just tack all of those over. And what I've had to do is, it's pretty pitted right here. So I've been taking Bondo, I've been lightly skinning over it. I'm getting it nice and smooth for when it's all painted up. And right over here, there's a pretty nasty hole in it. So I had to make a patch panel, I filled it in with Bondo, smoothed it over, and it's coming out nice. This is a reproduction Willys. I think CJ2A windshield because it's too tall to be an MB or GPW. But it must have been made in the days when they couldn't get the Willys script put on anything. But that's fine for me because I'm going for the Willys MB look. And this is all the new suspension hardware. All my old U-bolts and shackles were just shot. So I had to grind all those off, got these all painted up. That's a giant winch we were going to put on it, but it's about 10 times too big. And I got a bunch of leaf springs for free off a guy. We were going on 6x6 World and found he had a six-wheeler for sale. So we went over to his house and we were talking about the machine and he ended up having a Willys Jeep in his barn. So he gave me all of his leaf springs that he was in the process of rebuilding because he ended up going buying new ones. So I had four of these plus I got two other ones. That one being included right there. And it turns out that all six of these are for the rear. So I had to leave my front ones on and I just kind of gave up on restoring these. I got them all grinded down and then I put the primer over them. These stupid things are sliding all over. So that's why there's a little spot right here. Here's the new shocks that we got. The old ones are destroyed, I guess would be a nice way to put it. These look like the newer leaf springs that Kaiser Willie sells are a lot more durable and higher quality than the old ones. Those are pretty chintzy. What well, Jeeps were from the factory. Reproduction seat frames. I got in a pile of parts along with those leaf springs. Those are all painted up nice. This is a 1943 Ford GPW grill that I got from a guy on CJ2A page. When I got it, it looked pretty nice, but once it got sandblasted, we found there's a huge dent right here. And this spot right here is really nasty. The whole grill looks like it's been hit at one time. And someone must have just straightened it out by hand, but they didn't do a very good job. So it's pretty crooked right here. So patching that's been a pain. Over here, we've got either Willys MB or GPW fenders. We had two sets that went to sandblast. CJ fenders and these. And the CJ fenders look worse than these did. But when they came back from sandblast, these actually looked way nicer. But, I've had to do some patch panels. This is the first time I've ever welded. They came out decent. I wouldn't brag about them. And this is the worst panel out of all of them. This is the worst spot out of the whole set of fenders. This area right here is eaten up pretty bad, so I welded in that patch right there. And I just gotta fill it in with some body filler. It doesn't look too bad once you got a panel behind it. But as a whole, these fenders are pretty nice. The inside's not rusted at all. I had to weld in a crack there. Then I just have to bondo over this pitted rust, but nothing too heavy. I started the process of bondoing this, but it's not coming out as good as I hoped, so I'm going to redo that. And then I had to weld in another patch panel. 
started a fire. So I gotta redo that as well. When I went online to willysforsale.com, I got a big pile of parts that came with rims, that hood over there, the windshield, all kinds of good stuff. This is a bunch of parts I've got lined up for the Jeep. i got a worn overdrive in here. I think it's a 26 tooth, but I'm not sure. All kinds of miscellaneous parts. You know when you order a lot of parts, they give you free catalogs. We got stencils over here. Transfer case, rebuild kit. Inside here we've got Willy's MB headlights and taillights. And then we've got miscellaneous hardware to go with the windshield, speedometer, all kinds of good stuff. Over here is some more suspension hardware. Got the bolts for the new leaf springs. Transfer case, intermediate shaft bearings, bushings. This is what I've been using to make my repair panels out of. Stole it from the back. This is everything I've been taking off of the Jeep. That's not good. She rode like a caddy. This basically just fell apart when I grinded off one of the edges. There's a rigged up jerry can mount. These were the tubes that came with my newer tires, but these valve stems were incorrect. And you can see right here where they've been tearing because they weren't correct for the rim. These are the rims I'm not using. They're pretty heavily pitted. Have a little bit of paint incident over here. There's another one of the new leaf springs. I can tell they've been used a little bit but not too much because they're in really nice condition. These were the other pair that I got from the guy with the StarCraft Hurricane. He's in the process of rebuilding them, but there's really no point when you can go buy a new spring for 125 bucks. All the paint accessories over here. Got my jerry cans. I did two of them just because they're cool. That's the winch that came off of it. I've got to put a new rope on here because it got a little bit of damage. That's a jerry can mount. Here's an ammo box I got from Tractor Supply. I was originally going to buy spray paint for the Trail Boss. And me and Mikey walking up there with 20 cans of spray paint, being 17 years old, they wouldn't let us buy any. Well, I was pretty sad, but I found this. It's pretty neat. I've been mounting this on the inside of the Jeep as my glove box, and it's waterproof, so what I've been doing is leaving an extra fuse in there, key, cell phone, camera, wrap it up in a t-shirt, and then when you go sink it in the middle of Bundy Hill, you can just rip it out. I've got it on GoPro.
Good job, guys. Perfect. Smile. Say, I love Willys. Dual engines. Look at it. Brought shit to load shit so I could take some piece of shit home to rebuild for some shit Jeep. We're in a lot of shit here. Maybe you should take another picture of the rabbit shit we had to step through to get to the barn. <laughs> You're supposed to have done this when you painted it. Well, I didn't know that I, I didn't like do this. Now you got to start over because you got to do the bottom. No one opened the door for more time. That one. Thank you. 
I think so. I He wants to make this work. pretty, but he doesn't want to do the work for it. The yes. and come out. Look at that. That looks dinky. And the power wash. Huh. Go on out there and take a power wash. Shut up. It looks bigger than everything off of it. It's a fine piece of wood. It yeah. is. That's factory special. I don't know. I think this is a huge stamp. This is after stamp. Stamp. <laughs> this is <after> reduction. <laughs> Oh, there you go. What is that? Good fun. Looks like this thing's been bouncing out here for a while. I'll put a hole in it. Oh. Probably remember those? Yeah, I remember that. that. Son of a bitch. <laughs> we could do it. just luck that we got it. We should have never went back to it right there. <laughs> <laughs> I need a real t shirt. No. Thanks, Carl Allen. Mm -hmm. Boy, that was a pain in the I don't know why we couldn't get it that day. We just couldn't reach something. Yeah, I know. It's easy now. Yeah, it does. There's no engine. <laughs> Let's take it apart and put <laughs> it back together. No. I'm going to fall off. I just take my grand paint and you know, put it back together. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I don't know what this baby. Are you gonna wash? No. How am I gonna get that in here? You got the fork lifted out the door. Why? Probably weighs a hundred pounds. You gotta pick it up and take it outside. Yeah. A couple straps with a long fork extensions. This is demotivating right now. <laughs> I'm not emotional. <laughs> then you can flip this over and do the bottom of it. Oh god. Paint it up real nice. Yeah, you look cake too. The Jeep people would be disgusted with you if you knew you had a body off restoration and didn't even finish it. Put it back on dirty. It's 12.10 in the morning, and here is a Willie's frame. I decided to pull the body off because it would be easier to get to the transmission from pulling the 10 bolts out of the body than trying to reach underneath and pull all this stuff underneath. Stuff like this, there's a reason why I'm having to repaint the whole thing. When the body came off, there's a ton of mud just stuck in between right here. And then when I got to clean all that off, I had the air chuck on. I was hitting behind here, and there's chunks of mud that flew off, and paint underneath was just gone. So I don't go through with the screwdriver and scrape off all the nasty mud and muck from in between the diff housings and the wheel hubs and in between the frame. So that's why she's getting repainted again. Over here is just a bunch of miscellaneous little pieces. I was planning on having this entire thing filled up with parts and pieces to paint. But, do not have time tonight. Oil bath filter. The hood and the body. Had to do some last minute bondo. And grill. And over here, we got the parts 2A. She's pretty rough. frame is pretty much gone on this. It's a lot thinner than my frame because this is a two-way. I think they're about an inch shorter than a three-way. 
I traded a hood for this at the local car quest guy's house. And I was planning on using the hub off of this. But the insides of it are pretty shot and mine right here on this little keyway slot got sheared back. So I can't use it anymore. I threw it back on the Jeep just to cover up the insides for painting. Hopefully this gets sold tomorrow. Snacks. And here's the radiator. I didn't have time to clean that. I was going to paint it, but it didn't work out. And the reason why that's all oil and drippy and stuff, I was taking the air truck trying to clean it off, but this was sitting behind it and the air truck hit this and the oil just exploded everywhere. It got on me a bit. There's some little miscellaneous engine parts and pieces and fire extinguisher clamp. Just had all this powder coated so when the engine comes back, I don't have to deal with it. But all the other little miscellaneous pieces, they couldn't go to powder coat. Some more little things. That is the last time she's ever going to be a bare metal. Here's where the Jeep sits as of now. It's uh, Sunday night before school. It's getting pretty late. I got all my parts ready to be painted. This is the last of my side from the engine. This is a reproduction Willy Zombie grill. And the only thing I had to do to this was fill in the little pressing marks from the tool with Bondo so that way it'd be all smoothed out. That stuff goes all the way around up there. I didn't like the looks of it. Here's a new old stock Willy Zombie Fender. And I do the same thing on here, where when they stamp it, when they're building it, right here, it would kind of add in these warps. So I filled that all nice and smooth with the Bondo. And then this had a little bit of pitting rust in it. So reproduction CJ3B Fender. And the reason why I got this was because it's only 75 bucks. There's a little spot right here about that big, a little dent in there. And they couldn't sell it as a new product, so I got that pretty cheap. All nice and straight. Here's a new old stock MB hood. And the reason I went with this one instead of the other one I had is because it's nice and straight. No warping in anywhere. I had to uh, redo all this because I had chunks of mud stuck underneath the paint. Then I also pulled out the axle shafts and repacked them with grease. Top of the frame got painted over. It was full of mud and rust. Then I pulled all the brake lines off the back, so got all that nice and cleaned up. There's where the body sits. My shelf uh, parts is getting bigger and bigger. Some engine parts over here had those powder coated. Spare rims and miscellaneous stuff. 
And over here, I got all the little miscellaneous light pieces and mirror. There's the oil canister, air filter. Got my starter. All the little hood latches. And then here's my original radiator from 1949. Got to clean all that up nice and straighten out some of the combing. And then today, I also got my transmission back. And luckily, I was able to source out an overdrive for about 500 bucks. So I snagged that. And that's what this is right here. It takes out the gear on the end of this, replaces it with the same gear, but it's also connected to another gear. So when you pull this forward or backwards, does it engage or disengages it? The guy had to rebuild the transfer case because the intermediate shaft was completely, the bearings were gone. The whole shaft is twisting and grinding the gears together. He said he also had to pull apart the transmission itself because it was full of mud and dirt. And now it's getting pretty late, I'm going to start painting.
Just got the engine back from Keith. Completely rebuilt. Got the old water pump on here and robbed this off another engine. Waiting for mine to come in. Old exhaust manifold, got a new one. Got the bell housing over here all cleaned up, all the mud off of it. And over here, got the transmission. And I found out that the Jeep's birthday is June 26th, 1949. Here's the rear axle out of the blue CJ two-way that I took out because mine has a lot of shaft movement and you can't even rotate it by hand. So that's pretty much a job. So it's cheaper to just fix this one. Got some brake parts hanging up. Here's a pedal hook, was gonna use it on my Jeep, but my friend Hugh decided he needed it for his since I stole it before I sold it. It's a hood, I had to resend some of the spots on it. Had a bug land on it. Over here is all the parts that I haven't used yet. There's a pedal hook I'll be using, basically the same thing as an MB. Here's a fender blackout light bucket. I got two sets of bump ruts here. One of them has some welding on the corner. I'm not gonna use those. I got another set. These go on the fender to hold down the blackout lights. Cut these out of that one MB that I have sitting out back. Got my primer all mixed up. All the other parts waiting to be put together. All the body stuff. Frame is all ready to be put together. Got it all blocked off so the primer doesn't fall on it. And that's where we're at tonight.
We just got the engine fully rebuilt, painted, and the transfer case just got a full rebuild. I also installed the overdrive on it. Got both of those made it up. New throw bearing and shaft. I left all the old spark plugs and manifolds on there just for painting. The new exhaust and intake manifold. It's right there. These seats got a poster by a local Amish company. They're a lot better than the normal seats from Beachwood Canvas because these are more of a smooth texture and if you get dirt on there it just wipes right off. The other seats, the moment you get something on there, it's pretty much stained for life. And this is a frame as it sits before it's ready to go back together. We got the disc brake conversion on here and it's off a uh, 1980s Chrysler LeBaron. It just slides right on there, has the same bolt pattern as what normally is on here. It just bolts onto the end of the knuckle with a little bracket that comes out. And then you just press the same Jeep hub into there. Then the rear drum's got new brake shoes in there. The wheel cylinders are pretty decent still. We just had to run new brake lines over the back axle because the old ones got smashed up against the frame. And then we also have the new style shackles on here. Instead of the U style, we have these custom made plates that bolt on here. That way they can't slide in and out of the leaves. Here's the old style. So if you have these on your Jeep, you know, if you're articulating off-road far, then this will eventually slide out of here. It also causes the leaves to separate, which is what happened on the back axle. Luckily I had two brand new ones to put on there. So next is just putting tires on here, then we're going to roll it over to the welding area. And since it's a CJ3A with the military grill on it, the radiator isn't going to mount to the back of the grill like it's supposed to. So we're going to have to make these brackets like what the military Jeeps or the early CJ2As had. A little piece that came out right here. That's why the radiator is not painted yet. It's probably going to get all scratched up. The hood's not painted yet because I'm having some problems with the paint gun every time we go to do it. Clogging up. There's the rest of the little parts getting painted. There's the old brakes that came off of it. Yeah, I wonder why I didn't have any brakes. That and then over here, I got the old brake lines. And I don't know which, this is the one that has a little cut in it. I think I got a little happy with the grinder. That one's cut open. Then, I don't know where it's at, but the other one that was on the rear axle I'm getting smashed up against the frame. Against this little piece right here. And hopefully next week it'll be back on the wheels, engine, training in radiator ready to mount but painted uh, I'm gonna do the brake lines and then once the brake lines are done we can put the tub back on it
We got the Jeep parked up by the shop because we need to get the radiator mounted all up. And I don't have the brackets for it on my cross member because my radiator used to mount to the back of the grill. So I got the fan mocked up on there and about ready to put on the grill. And then tomorrow, get all that mounted up. This is the old exhaust manifold, spark plugs, and this isn't even mine. I stole that off another engine. Everything's just kind of mocked up for getting everything mounted. And we got to get different size bolts for that. This is the old water pump. But everything should start going back together here in the next couple days. Hold up, hold up. 
Bella feels like it's going to pull on Sure, I never Grab this. You kind of got to go at an angle to get the shifters. Oh. Careful. Yeah, let's the bottom it. part let's folds Let's put it on the floor. We need a better. So the kill switch does work. Quiet. <laughs> it's burning the crap. 
brush paint off the engine. so bad Just yesterday we got the Jeep running for the first time. We got all the uh, hoses and wires and all that kind of stuff on the engine. All those little things that take time. And today I got the exhaust system finished up. I got the muffler all mounted up. And I got the lug nuts on the wheel painted. The spray can stuff works really nice. You can spray it right over any other part that you've already painted that blends right in. Then I had Rich cut my body open after I painted it, it had it all looking nice. Then we added the slots in it for the Pioneer tools because they had to be pushed in a little bit to clear the body. And I actually have the stuff on here for when I painted it still because it's rushed over right away. He has a system all figured out for strapping it down. But hopefully tomorrow, I'll be moving the shovel from about this area to here because it's right in the doorway here and the military style was pushed farther up. I think the reason why I didn't do it is because this bolt was hitting here. But this is actually supposed to be turned sideways. So, after I get my fenders on later tonight in the grill, then I'll be able to know how far I can actually push that thing up. The interior's looking pretty good. Got my seats. They have a textured tan color to them and they're nice and slippery so I can actually clean it. There's steering wheel on. Still got to tidy up the dash area. I'll probably eventually get new gauges because these are all nasty and worn out. If I gotta sand down and paint around all this because it got screwed up when I covered it in grease to protect the glass from paint. Still gotta get the shifter cover on. There's too many things to do. I never did get my toolbox lid made. I took the Jeep driving around a little bit earlier today through the woods got some leaves in there well I need to adjust the clutch because right now it doesn't want to go into any other gear besides first it's almost not pushing in all the way so really all the front area needs is hook the ground wire up somewhere else we did have it down here for driving it around but um, Get a little strap made for that, and it should be almost good to go. And um, in the paint booth, we got all kinds of things going on here. I just finished the windshield. We drilled and tapped all the screws for putting the weather seal on that goes between this and the cowl. And I had to cut these bolts down to fit through here that are going through here. So I gotta put the latches on, spray that down, and then I can put the seal back on and put this on the Jeep. And over here, I got my siren that I gotta hook up still. Got the panel hook that I gotta tidy up the paint on. It's not quite there yet. I've got my bumperettes that, since I didn't actually make a rear bumper for the Jeep. This goes on the rear cross member right here through these bolts and then this bolts into here. 
That's my Jeep. When I got my body rewrapped, the wrap came down too far on here. This half inch is preventing me from fitting a real bumper on because it's a C channel that has to slide over the frame rail, but I can't do that. So my brackets just bolt right in here, come across this way, and I can get the bumper out on. Then the tent. I got my hood that I'm about to repaint for the third or fourth time. I'm starting to lose track. Every time I do it, somehow dust from overspray lands on it. It basically makes it look like carpet. So, I uh, painted the bottom of it, so that way I'm not painting one side and then overspraying to the other side. It should be good to go there. And um, hopefully, with it being tilted up like this, the dust won't stick to it. It'll kind of just fall down. There's a mouse running around in here somewhere. There's a fender, it's almost ready to rock. It's got both those on. Got all these little miscellaneous pieces. I've got the body grab handles and all kinds of stuff in here. Glove box door, blackout light for the fender, fire extinguisher mount. But really, I don't have time to put any of that crap on. I'm hoping I can get this put on the Jeep because it's so cool looking. But I'm not going to have time for reflectors or taillights or any of that stuff. So now I'm going to paint the hood, then after that I'm going to put my fenders on and the grill on. The grill has to go on first so I can get the fenders fit. I would have done it earlier but I had to paint my bolts right here to blend in with the radiator. And I don't know why but I've got a major exhaust leak. The gasket's not even touching the engine block. So it's shooting out everywhere and spraying. It's not going into gear, but it rides nice. So now I just gotta get that hood painted, get the front body on, and then I should be good to go for taking her to the car show tomorrow. I'm just hoping to get the body on, hopefully most of the stencils. I got the star for here, the shipping label for here. I've got the numbers for this and the star for the top. And then I also have some kind of a maximum speed for the windshield. Let's see how far we do get tomorrow. No, we're touching it. 
it's just a hinge, I think, because it's not hinge. Let it down. It's hitting that bar. Oh, the radiator bar. Oh, because it's like shoved all the way down. Get those bolts out. Yeah, those bolts are good.
I have waited two years almost since I got this thing to put numbers on the side of it. All Jeeps had a 20 in the front, which meant something about a light vehicle, I can't remember. And then the rest of these were just numbers that the military assigned based on production. They start them on one end of the line and they just kind of do numbers in order to the other end. But since this isn't a true Willys MB, um, I ended up getting that reproduction hood. And then I took my great grandpa's um, military number and used that for the rest of these. So his number starts here. And I think there's a couple more numbers that it continues on to, I think three of them. But I had to have the 20 in there and then Jeeps only had like eight or nine numbers, depending on what year. So it's got a little bit of sentimental value. I did the Broken Invasion Star because it looks a lot better than the single white star. That is just too cool. Look at that.